Dr. Gabor Mate, I'm honored to read your work and now actually to be here interviewing you, but having the chance to. Uh, thanks for being with us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. I want to ask you first off the top about the toxicity in our world that in the amid COVID-19, all of us emotionally and in our bodies are absorbing. Yes. So... What COVID has done is it has highlighted and um, heightened and intensified a lot of unhealthy dynamics that are inherent in this culture. So when I say unhealthy dynamics, I mean from the point of view of what do human beings require? So basically, from the evolutionary point of view, we're wired for connection, for contact, for belonging, for a sense of meaningful activity, for, um, we might say we have a neurological system that's set up for loving and to be loved. Now this culture basically tells us that we're competitive, aggressive creatures meant to um, vie with each other for the necessities of life, and that some has to lose and some has to win. Now, COVID has heightened all that because where we have this need for connection, it has isolated us. In fact, the byword is um, social distance, whereas what we need is social closeness. Now, for a lot of people, that's very, very difficult because already their sense of connection was tenuous. So there's been a, an epidemic of loneliness in, in the Western world in the last 30, 40 years, especially. And we know that loneliness and disconnection is physiologically harmful. People that are isolated socially, they get sick quicker and they die quicker of their diseases because our physiology is dependent on connection. And so what we found under COVID is, um, first of all, the most vulnerable people, the most marginalized, are the ones to get quicker, uh, sick, sicker from COVID and who are more susceptible to it. We're also finding there's an increase in overdoses from drug, uh, drug use. There's an increase in mental health conditions. There's an increase in domestic violence. In other words, all the dynamics that were present in this society before right. are now heightened under the impact of COVID. We all have people in our lives who are lonely. You could even call the zeitgeist or the spirit of this age loneliness because of our culture. So what is the answer when you feel so helpless? You know, I wish I had an easy answer to that. Um, but I think the answer has to um, arise on, on two levels. First of all, any crisis as the Chinese say, is also an opportunity. So in a crisis, there's danger and there's opportunity. So the dangers we've already talked about. The opportunity is that we, on the individual level, really ask ourselves, who are we really? Yes. And, and how do we derive meaning from life? Yes. And what really matters to us? And uh, what COVID has given many of us is an opportunity, in fact, an imposed opportunity to be with ourselves and to do some self-reflection. So on, on some level, I think we have to really start looking at ourselves and, and ask ourselves, well, what is our lives really all about? On a social level, I believe that in dealing with the epidemiological aspects of COVID, the, the perhaps necessary isolation and, and you know the lockdown and so on what the society has not done is to say well what else can we put in this place how do we help people connect what structures can we create what programs what public programs can we create to bring people together even if they're physically isolated that has not been done we've been dealing with the necessary isolation but we've not been dealing with the impacts of that isolation you can't separate people's emotional lives from their physiology. You can also not separate people's physiology from their relationships. Sue Rodriguez, Stephen Hawking, and the cellist Jacqueline Dupre. 
incredible, fascinating stories. I had no idea about Sue Rodriguez and how lonely she was. And I had no idea that all of this, all of, like childhood and so many loneliness, so many things make us sicker as we age when the body just eventually says no. The cost of hidden stress, right. which is a totally different story, which means that a lot of the stresses that are ailing us, we're not even aware of it. There's a central no. theme running through us as we wear our masks every day. Yeah. No, the two of the people that you mentioned, Sue Rodriguez, the person who fought for the right to kill herself with assisted suicide, and did so finally because she had ALS, amateur lateral sclerosis, and Stephen Hawking, who also had ALS. Yes. They're very interesting figures. First of all, because the ALS is supposed to be terminal within two years or within 10 years at the most. Stephen Hawking lived more than 50 years. That's After true. he was told he's got two years left, he lived another five decades at least, which tells us what? Which tells us that medical science maybe doesn't know everything. Now, let me tell you, since that book came out, there's been more studies than ALS published in the medical literature. Well, interesting, the niceness attribute of their personalities which under the surface is uh, unmetabolized emotion, rage and anguish, not anger, anguish. Yes, well, so there's been a study more since the publication of my book, which showed that ALS people who get in touch with their anger, they live longer. And furthermore, another study that showed that most neurologists to work with ALS people find them extraordinarily nice. Yes. Now, now, what does that tell us? It tells us that there's a tremendous interaction between mind and body that medical science does not investigate. Right. And furthermore, that what we call medical science, valid as it is, is a, is a very narrow strip of reality. And that our understanding has to go way beyond. Now, I've talked to people with ALS who are supposed to have been died, dead 30 years ago. <laughs> And what they've done is they've completely transformed their relationship to themselves. Wow. Now, if you can give me a moment, if I can jump up and jump, sit down again, is that okay? Absolutely. Give me a second. So if you look at the important systems in the body and the brain, they're completely connected. So that the emotional centers in the brain are connected to the immune system and the hormonal apparatus and the uh, nervous system. There's a book that came out recently. I'm holding it in my hand. Mm -hmm. It's called Cured, the life-changing science of spontaneous healing. It's by a physician psychiatrist from Harvard University. And like I've done, mm -hmm. I've talked to multiple people with multiple sclerosis, for example, who were told that they're gonna have to be on medication for the rest of their lives, and this condition was gonna get worse, were actually, better from their multiple sclerosis. Now in this book, Dr. Rediger documents, he gets the medical records of dozens and dozens of people who've been told they have terminal disease. There's nothing more that medical science can do for them who actually heal completely. Mm -hmm. And he's not the only one to have done such research. Mm -hmm. And what Rediger found and what I have found and what other researchers have found is that the biggest transformation in the people that heal from so-called terminal disease is a transformation in their relationship to themselves. Now, I'm not here to speak against medical science. I can see really well because I had this amazing corneal um, implant. Wow. You know, people are walking around with heart transplants. Mm -hmm. So there's no gainsaying or there's no naysaying the uh, miracles of modern medicine. But what I'm saying about it is that in the face of chronic conditions, modern medicine is pretty helpless. Mm -hmm. And be because we don't look at the mind-body unity and to what extent how we relate to the world and our emotions and our thoughts and how what we believe about ourselves affects our physiology. Jesus says that the power 
and the reality is not outside of yourself, but inside. He says the kingdom of God is within. How does your own personal faith inform you and your work? You know, look, Susan, there's there's the, there's the, there's the persona, there's the genuine activity that I carry out in the world, carry out in the world, and I know that I've my work has meant a lot to a lot of people. Yes. But I also have to tell you, as confident and as articulate as I may be when I express my understanding of the world and, and the authentic nature of reality, in my personal life, I'm, I'd be much more conflicted. Yes. And, and, and it's, 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 for me, it's an ongoing. So when you ask about meaning and, 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 and faith, really for me, I believe in people's, if I have a faith, it's in the basic goodness of humanity. And that we're meant to be much more than just our little minds and our little isolated egos. Mm -hmm. I also am constantly up against the challenge of my own limitations and my own lack of faith and my own discouragement and, and the need to keep working to get underneath that and beyond it so that I would say what keeps me going is my interest in the truth and just what is reality mm -hmm. and I keep having to ask that question on the personal level and on the social level mm -hmm. and sometimes I feel discouraged but on the whole I do have a, a knowledge that there is truth you know, and um, like Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will liberate you. Well, it's not that I'm a liberated person, but I do see the potential for liberation in all of us. So that's what keeps me going. Everybody has to find their own answer. Mm -hmm. So I say to people is start asking questions about your life. Start getting curious about what you believe, why you believe it. Is it really true? Is there something more that you haven't looked at? If things are not working for you, rather than being down on yourself and ashamed of yourself or blaming others, be curious about it. So really what I teach, if anything, is curiosity. Mm -hmm. I just want to thank you so much uh, for talking with me and for your honesty. And may we all take off the masks and may we all get to know ourselves on a on a deep level true level